we have got a bunch of end of the chapter sample problems. So pause the video here and figure out what property of a gas is described in each of the following below. Hopefully you found that it was amount of the gas if helium gas is added to a balloon and volume if a balloon expands as it rises higher. The oxygen in a tank in the hospital respiratory unit has a pressure of 4,820 millimeters of mercury. Calculate the pressure in atmospheres. Knowing that there's 760 millimeters of mercury in one atmosphere, we could write either one of those conversions. So we're going to start with what we were given, 4,820 millimeters of mercury. We want to make sure that that 760 millimeters of mercury is on the bottom so that we can cancel those out. And we should get 6.34 atmospheres because we need to end with three significant figures. You are going to need to look back at your notes for this next one. A tank of nitrous oxide, N2O, used as an anesthetic, has a pressure of 48 PSIs. What is that pressure in atmospheres and in tors? You're going to need to look at those conversion factors. Here is my work. 48 PSIs is our starting point and there is 14.7 PSIs in one atmosphere. My calculator spit out 3.2653. I want to end with two significant figures since I started with two, so that would round to 3.3 atmospheres. Now going to tors from atmospheres, in one atmosphere 760 tor, so I just used my unrounded number here and did my 3.2653 times 760 and I got 2481.63 again we want two significant figures so I would go one two that eight will round that four up to a five so 2500 tor or you can write in scientific notation pause here to read your problem and answer A and B we'll go over them in a minute for part A we were given volume, an initial volume, and we're given an initial pressure in ATMs. It wants to know a second volume after the pressure goes to 744 millimeters of mercury. Well, that millimeters of mercury is not the same unit as our ATM, so let's get to atmospheres. Knowing that there's 760 millimeters of mercury in one atmosphere, that gives us 0.9789 atmospheres. So our pressure goes down, that's going to be our P2, so I've got P1V1 equals P2 times V2. We need to find that volume. So let's divide both sides by 0.9789. And we would get a volume of 73.5519. We want to finish with three significant figures. I would go one, two, three. In fact, I would say that's 73.6 milliliters. And let's just make sure that this makes sense. My pressure went from 1.6 to about 1. So pressure went down. The volume should go up. 45 milliliters up to 73.6 milliliters. Sounds about right. Let's do letter B. Part B wants the new pressure, so we're trying to find P2. When the volume of the methane bubble expands to 125 milliliters, so that's our V2. So I said a P1, V1 with our initial volume and pressure. And P2 is question mark, and our V2 is 125. So we divide both sides by that 125. That'll cancel out my milliliters, leaving me with 0.576 atmospheres. Pause the video here to go over these questions. Let's look at this one. A mountain climber inhales air that has a temperature of negative 8 degrees Celsius. I took that temperature and made it into Kelvin. If the final volume of air in the lungs is 569 milliliters, so I made that V2 since that's final, at a body temperature of 37, so this is my T2, I added 273, so our T2 is 310. What was the initial volume, so V1, of air, assuming that that temperature, 265 Kelvin, was our T1? So I'm setting up our V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. My V1 is my question mark, that's my T1. This is my V2, this is my T2, and I cross multiplied. So I have 310 times V1 is equal to, I multiplied 569 times 265 to get 150,785. To get V1 by itself, I divided both sides by 310, and that should leave me with, with three significant figures, 
milliliters. I always like to double check that it makes sense. My temperature increased, so my volume should increase. I started with 485 and it increased to 569. That makes sense. Let's look at the second question. A hiker inhales 598 milliliters of air if the final volume of air in the lungs is 612. So that tells me that that's my V2. My V2 is 612. So this 598 must be my initial volume. And this 612, that's the V2, it says at a body temperature of 37. So my T2 is 37 plus 273, so 310. What was the initial temperature? So I need to find T1. I'm going to cross multiply, so 612 times T1, which gave me 612 times T1, is equal to, and then I multiplied 598 times 310, so 185,380, and then I gotta get rid of that 612, so divide both sides by 612, that left me with T2 at 302.9 Kelvin, but it wants it in degrees Celsius, so I subtracted 273, and that gave me 29.9, and I only need two significant figures. So 29.9 would round to 30 degrees Celsius. Here's our next practice problem. Why don't you pause the video here? Let's look at this. In a storage area of a hospital where the temperature has reached 55 degrees Celsius, I changed that to Kelvin, the pressure of oxygen gas in a 15 liter steel cylinder, that's a volume, is 965 torr, that's a pressure. To what temperature in degrees Celsius would the gas have to be cooled so we need to find T2 to reduce the pressure to 850 torr. So we are given a second pressure. We want to find a second temperature. We're told that the volume and the amount of gas does not change. So we are looking purely at pressure and temperature. So I'm going to use P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. I put in my first pressure and my first temperature, my second pressure, and we need to find T2. So I cross multiplied, so 965 torr times T2, and then 850 times 328 would give me 278,800. Divide both sides by 965, that would give me a T2 of 288.9 Kelvin. It wants in degrees Celsius, so I subtracted 273 to get 15.9, and we want two sig figs, so 16 degrees Celsius. Let's look at letter B. What is the final pressure, so it's asking me to find P2 in millimeters of mercury when the temperature of the oxygen gas drops to 24 degrees Celsius. So we're given T2, I added 273, so we know our temperature 2. We want to find P2, and we're told the volume and the amount of gas has not changed. So we're looking at the relationship between pressure and temperature again. So I'm going to use that same P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. There's my first pressure now. We were told the pressure in torr, but if you look back at your cheat sheet, 760 torr is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So I just made that 965 millimeters of mercury. When we know our initial temperature equals P2 over T2. I'm gonna cross multiply, so 328 times P2, that's this part, and I'm gonna cross multiply here to give me 286,605. We want P2 by itself, so I'm gonna divide both sides by 328 to get rid of that. P2 would give me 873.79, but with three sig figs, 874 millimeters of mercury. This is our next practice problem, so pause the video here and try to work through it. Let's look at letter A. We're told that we have a weather balloon filled with 15 liters of helium, that's a volume, at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, that's a temperature, I made it into Kelvin, added 273, and a pressure of 685 millimeters of mercury. So we're given an initial volume, pressure, and temperature. It wants to know what is the pressure, so we need to find P2, in millimeters of mercury, which is good, we started with millimeters of mercury of the helium balloon in the upper atmosphere when the final temperature is negative 35 degrees Celsius, so I made T2 into Kelvin, and the final volume, so our V2, is 34 liters. 
So I put P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2 and filled in all of my variables. Here's my P1, 685 times 15 all over 298 Kelvin is equal to my P2 is the only variable I don't know times 34 liters divided by 238 Kelvin. Now I went through and cross multiplied again. So I did 685 times 15 times 238. So I did all of my diagonals and I got a big number 2,445,450 is equal to and then I cross multiplied right here P2 is the only variable there and then I did 34 times 298 to get 10,132. We need to get P2 by itself so we divided both sides by 10,132 and we got a P2 of 241.359 which would round to three sig figs, 241 millimeters of mercury. Part B wants to know what is the temperature so we are looking for T2 in degrees Celsius. If the helium balloon has a final volume, so this is our V2 of 22 liters, and a final pressure, so a P2 of 426 millimeters of mercury. We will be using the same equation, the combined gas law, P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. I put in my initial pressure that we were given up above, my initial volume, my initial temperature, my second pressure, my second volume, and we need to find T2. So I did the same cross multiplying. I did T2 times 15 times 685. That gave me 10,275. And then I multiplied 298 times 426 times 22 to get this really big number. Let's divide both sides by this 10,275 to get T2 by itself. And we should get 271.8, that's in Kelvin. We want Celsius, so I subtracted 273 and I got negative 1.19 degrees Celsius. There should be three significant figures. So negative 1.19. Pause the video here to do this practice problem. Let's look at what we're given. A balloon containing eight grams of oxygen gas. That's a mass. We always go from grams to moles. So let's do that right off the bat. Eight grams of oxygen, we're gonna go grams to moles, and we know oxygen gas is always diatomic, so it's O2. So there's 32 grams of oxygen gas and one mole of oxygen gas. So my initial moles is 0 0.25 moles of O2. Then it says, after four grams of oxygen gas is added to the eight grams, that's 12 grams of oxygen gas, so I went 12 grams to moles, to get an N2 of 0 0.375 moles. It wants to know what volume in liters. So we need to find V2. We're given V1 and we just converted grams to moles. So we know mole one, mole two. Let's set up our equation. We are going to use the equation that relates volume and moles. V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. My first volume given to me was five liters. My first moles was 0.25. That's equal to V2 over 0.375. I cross multiplied again, so I did five times 0.375 to get 1.875. And then I did V2 times 0.25 to get V2 by itself, divide both sides by 0.25. And with three significant figures, we would end with a final volume of 7.5 liters. The second part says that more oxygen gas is added to the balloon and to the volume is 12.6 liters, so that's our V2. How many grams of oxygen gas are in the balloon? We need to find moles first, and if I know moles, I can get to grams. So I set up my initial volume and my initial moles, so 5 over 0.25 is equal to 12.6 over N2. Let's cross multiply 12.6 times 0.25. When I cross multiply those two, I got 3.15 and then five times N2, divide both sides by five to get N2 by itself, and I would get my second mole value of 0.63 moles of oxygen. Now let's go from moles to grams. We know that in one mole of O2, there's 32 grams of O2. That would give me 20.16 grams of oxygen, which would be the total mass in the balloon. We want three significant figures, and this is four, so I'm just gonna go one, two, three, and that six will make that one, 
A2, so we should have 20.2 grams of oxygen.